In our course, we're going to almost always assume that we have a random unbiased sample. So it makes sense to take a moment here in section 1.3 and think about random sampling and how we create random samples if we so desire. So random sampling is any process that uses random chance in order to select individuals for the sample. Simple random sampling is one that every single individual is just as likely to be drawn into that sample as any other individual. Or if you'd like to think of another way, every single sample of size n is just as likely as every other sample of size n. Now a convenient sample is a sample in which the individuals are easily obtained and they're not based on randomness. You see convenience samples all the time. Um, the late night co comedy hosts love to do this. They'll take a um, a microphone out near a bar section of town and they'll ask people you know who's the president and people can't name the president etc cetera, etc cetera. that's a convenient sample it's convenient for the sake of comedy but also um tv shows like american idol or dancing with the stars or whatever anything you would call in um, and often pay for that call or text in and pay for that text or whatever that's a convenient sample it's biased towards all the people that care enough about it to watch and care even more about it to be able to call in or text in or whatever. Now, a random sample has no bias. Bias um, is something we do not want in our samples. So for example, if you took all men or all people over 40, that would be biased. Um, the people that are in the mall trying to ask people questions as they walk by, that's biased, right? A random sample is not biased. It has every single um, person just as likely as every single other person. Now, there are a lot of ways to take random samples, but we're just going to look at an SRS, a simple random sample. So we have um, a, a study here. We want to do a study of sexism on cartoons. We have the 50 greatest cartoon characters, according to CNN, and we are going to take a random sample of them and find out what proportion of them are female. So we have here 1 through 50 like this, and we want to take a random sample. Well, first of all, before we get into that, let's remind ourselves of rank is qualitative. It is qualitative, right? So these numbers, 1 through 50, are just labels. That's it. You know that the people that wrote this poll considered Bugs Bunny to be better than Homer Simpson, but you don't know by how much. Like, there is no difference between 1 and 2. And if you want to take the average of, you know, 6, 10, and 15, it doesn't mean anything, right? You can't take the mean of it. Okay, so that makes this data qualitative. It is ordinal, however, because it has a rank. You know that Bugs Bunny was considered higher than Homer Simpson, but you don't know what the difference is. There's no way, meaningful way to do that calculation. All right, now, how could we take a convenience sample? Well, that'd be easy. You could do it all sorts of ways. Take your 10 favorite ones. Take the 10 that are the first, the 10 that are last. Do the multiples of four, whatever. Those would all be biased ways to do this sample. Okay. So we want to make the calculator help us out with doing the random sample. Now I'm going to do this in two calculators. I'm going to start with the color calculator. So I press math and actually, no, I'm going to quit. I'm going to pick a seed. You can pick any number you like, like in the notes, I picked 25, but you could pick anything you want. And I'm going to store it math and we'll move to the left to probability menu, P R O B. And I'm going to pick number one enter. But again, pick any number makes you happy. Pick 35, pick 32, pick, you know, 79, 79, doesn't matter. So I'm going to pick 25. And then I'm going to say math, go back to the probability menu, and I'll pick number eight. See number eight down there? The rand int no repeat thing. That's what I want. Rand int no repeat. And I'm going to tell it the lower number was one, so I type in one. The upper number was 50. And then I want a sample of size 10, so I tell it 10. Then you move down to paste and press enter. And there it sits right there. And you press enter and you have your sample. So let me copy that and paste it into here. So our sample is 32, 20, 37, 9, 7, 1, 28, 10, 31, and I can't see the last one. But I'll go back here with my arrow, 42. Okay. So you're telling the calculator, essentially, the 25 part is basically telling the calculator where to start its randomness. There, basically, the calculator is sort of, if you want to think of it, looking at a random table. And telling it 25 is basically telling it the position in the table you want it to look at. So you can give it any number to be its position for starting. 
All right, that's how to do it with a color calculator, but it's a bit different with a non-color calculator. So let me show you that real quickly. All right, so I'm going to grab the calculator again. I'm going to switch to the other calculator. Oop. Okay. It's going to take a minute. There we are. You can see I've already done it here too, so I'll do it again. So here's the color, or the, it's an 84, but it's not color. So I'm going to say 25, store it as my seed. So I'm going to hit math, number, move to the left to probability, pick number one, that's fine, enter. And again, it doesn't have to be 25. Pick any number you like, you pick eight. Then I hit math, move to the probability menu again, and I want to be at the very bottom, number eight, rand int no repeat. And that's one comma 50. And you cannot enter the 10 like you can on the color calculator. You have to be just here, 1, 50. Enter. And there you have it. 6, 12, 33, 34, 3, 9, and so on. So pick just the first 10 numbers. It actually is doing all 50 numbers in an order. So you just need the first 10 of them, and then you have your sample. Okay, so that's how to do that with the calculator, either both the color or the non-color. Either one you can manage it with. All right, we're done with that. Now, a statistics instructor wants to obtain a simple random sample of three students from her class of 27. She assigns each number from 1 to 27 based on her role, which lists the students alphabetically by name. She claims that each of the following is a simple random sample. Is she right? Yes or no? And explain. So the instructor asks the student in the class to randomly choose three numbers from 1 to 27. The student chooses 15, 18, and 21. Then those students are the sample. And that is not random at all. People tend to pick, first of all, in patterns. Like these numbers are all divisible by 3, for example. But also, because they know their own name starts with a C, they won't pick an early number. Notice they didn't pick any low numbers. They only pick the high numbers, right? Because maybe their friends are on the low numbers or whatever. So that is not random. What about having the calculator do it, just like we just did, a computer or a calculator? And the answer to that is mostly. <laughs> so it isn't really random. If you take a computer science class, you find out that getting a computer to actually be random is extremely difficult. But for our purposes in our course, it's close enough. We will consider this random. So when the calculator does that, that's random. If a computer does it, we consider that to be random. What if the teacher has two 10-sided dice? So let me show you what 10-sided dice look like. So right here, these two green ones right here, that's actually the number 72. So these are both 10-sided dice. This one has the 70 up, and this one has the 2 up, and that makes 72. Or you could have this one, this one has the 90 up, and this one has the 40 facing up, that's 94, and so on. And what you would do is take the two dice like these, these two green ones, and you toss them and toss them and toss them again and again until you came up with 10 numbers that are between 1 and 27. It would take you a while, but it would be pretty fun to do, right? All right, so that counts as a random sample, for sure, as long as the dice are fair, right? And that, of course, whether your dice are truly fair or not is another issue. But fair means every side is equally likely, and as long as that's the case, which we assume it is, we assume the dice, aren't, dice are not loaded, then that would be a random sample. Now, if the teacher puts the numbers on um, slips of paper torn from a sheet of paper, then three slips are chosen. That's not good, and that's because she tears the paper, so they're not all equally the same size. You're far more likely to grab with your hands pieces of paper that are bigger rather than smaller. So that is not a random sample. But what if she places them on index cards, you think? Well, if she folds them, and folds them in different directions, that's not good either. Because again, folding them in different sizes, she's probably more likely to pick one than the other, probably the width-wise one rather than the lengthwise. Folded hot dog or hamburger, not hot dog style. So because the cards are folded in different ways, she's more likely to choose one fold or another or whatever. It's not random. If, however, she puts them in the bowl and doesn't fold them, that would be random, as long as she shuts her eyes and everything like that. Okay. That would be every card is just as likely to be drawn. That's a simple random sample. All right, so now that we're done with that, let's look at this. A newspaper advertisement from USA Today reads as follows. Should handgun control be tougher? You call the shots in a special call-in poll tonight. If yes, call blah, blah, blah. If no, call blah, blah, blah. Charge is 50 cents for the first minute. A total of 12,233 people called in to give their views. All right. First of all, explain why this poll is almost certainly biased. Oh, it's biased in a big way. First of all, it's biased because only people that 
one, bought the paper, and two, read that piece on the article, and three, cared enough to call in, and four, had the money to call in and had a phone to call in, and et cetera. You see what I'm saying? It's biased so many different ways. It's biased for money. It's biased for people that are reading. It's biased for people that care enough to call. It's biased all over the place. This is called sampling bias. Not everybody in the U.S. was equally likely to be selected. You are biasing your sample, and that is a bad thing. You do not want to buy a sample. And that's because a bias sample, no matter how big it is, is not good, right? It is not valid. And all the stuff that you would come from that, the mean and the median and everything else, all the statistics that would come from that are junk. They're worthless, right? A convenient sample is so badly taken that you cannot draw conclusions from that, regardless of how large the sample is. It doesn't matter that 12,000 people call into American Idol. It's still biased. American Idol doesn't pick the best singers. It picks the people that are the most popular based on who cares enough to call. Right? That is a convenient sample. So in other words, for statistical purposes, a convenient sample is junk. It does not have any, produce anything that is worth discussing as far as we are concerned, regardless of how many people they polled. So that's an important thing to note because students often think, oh, the bigger the sample, the better. Well, yes and no. We want bigger samples, but we don't want them to be junk samples. And that's what convenient samples are, right? So if it's convenience, it's biased and therefore it's relevant to us how big it was. All that matters to us is how well the sample was taken. To get a better gauge of what people think about gun control, what could you do? And the answer is you take a simple random sample. You don't need 12,000 people either. You could take a simple random sample of like 1,000 and that would be good. That is how all the big news organizations do it. They pull, they pull people by randomly calling them, right? They don't let them, the people call into them. They call the people, not the other way around. And you can get away with a smaller sample. You can use, you will not need 12,000 people if the sample is taken in an appropriate fashion. Appropriate, random, unbiased way. You'd rather have less people with a better way of doing it than a big sample that's convenience. There, I just typed that up. You'd rather have a smaller sample that is well done than a bigger sample that is just convenience because convenience is garbage.